and every time he's come, he's blessed us with bars. He's personified what it means to be an artist in this day and age in a way that actually appeals to me and Heather having come into the game as young artists ourselves. So a lot of uh, my... Uh, my um, epiphany or, or a lot of the allure of an artist like him is because it reminds me of an artist like myself at one point where you're just not really playing the industry game as well as others. You're not doing the tap dance. You're not you're not puckering up to billionaires asses. You're not doing all those different things, <laughs> you know, all these different things that people tend <laughs> to do. And you learn what a person is in for it, why they're in for it, have to do a duration of time by how long they're in it. You know, when this man first started coming out with uh, Working and Reason, uh, when he came out with the EPs and the singles from early on in his career, and he came out with Funhouse Mirror and all of these different things, you know, that was him just expressing him. That's just how I interpret it. Him finding his voice, finding himself as an artist um, during a really kind of complicated time when it came to music. The digital space was became prominent. The, uh, the influencers became prominent. It's just... You know, and then music became, took like, seemed like it took a third seat. But it's people like him that stayed the course and continued, that found their lane. And now we can still have these conversations seven years later. And he figured it out that you do not have to be at the top of the charts. You do not have to be the favorite of the best or the biggest influencer. You do not have to have mainstream radio rotation. You do not have to be on every uh, playlist, on every DSP, and you can still make a living and build a career and be happy. And that's exactly what he's done, citizens. Give it up for the one and only Marlon Kraft. Oh, man. Who's back. I'm listening to his album. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Always, man. Super grateful. Now, how's the family? Everybody's good. Actually, yeah. I'm headed out of here today. I'm going on a little family vacation. That's why I brought the suitcase. I had to bring the suitcase to the... Oh, is that what that is? Nice. Yeah, so I'm right from here. I'm out of here. I'm going to try to you know, do a little family vacation. Everybody's good, thriving, getting older, yeah. you know, healthy. Yeah, who, who's all going? My grand, my grandma's gone. She's ninety five. Okay, oh my damn, gosh. that's beautiful, she's beautiful. brother. She's outside, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She out there. Yeah, my my, my sister and uh, yeah, my yeah. family. Your family gonna be she's there. Good, yeah. Yo, Marlon Kraft, man, I, I know his family, Heather. You know, we they they know me and his family. How? I've you know I've just been a supporter for so long. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know I done got all kind of gifts from the family. Everything. I thought you bum rush maybe went and got a plate or something. Well, they got a restaurant, right? You still got the restaurant? Nah, nah, nah. We just had the whiskey. No oh, restaurant. okay. Oh, I thought but it was a restaurant. Nah, okay. nah. Okay. We're we not getting money like that yet, but <laughs> okay. we, we'll get there. But you got, you're selling alcohol. How's the whiskey doing? The whiskey was cool. It was just these limited runs that we did. Um, right now, we just rocking with these new, these new pro these new like physicals that we did for the project. We sold like 200 of them out in an hour. So that was really dope. 200 yeah. whiskeys? No, no, 200 no, these, of these, oh, these physical see, projects see, out. So we're going to restock these and uh yeah we're getting the merch going we're doing dope. it all what is playstation that? uh sort of like cover that he just mm -hmm. uh photoshopped to match the album artwork and uh I, I appreciate when people do stuff like this because when you do like a limited edition of anything it gives people an, uh an incentive to want to you know invest in your career because it's like yeah. oh i can get something physical copy to actually have which a lot of people don't really appreciate anymore albums cassettes yeah. cds things like that and so yeah you put your money into that it looks good all right uh, this is dope man this is yeah. all your money this is all that's independent. all well listen we based it off the nba street volume two you know one of the most iconic video games in the culture mm -hmm. ever and so like this was kind of this was home court advantage volume two and it was like that era of playing that game and being in the streets in New York playing basketball mm -hmm. like embodied that for me. So it's been really cool to see the response of how many people kind of resonated with that. And yeah, we out here rocking. I love it, man. Marlon Kraft is here. The new project is Home Court Advantage Volume 2. Marlon Kraft, you've managed to craft a career that everybody hasn't seen yet, but a lot of folks have, mm -hmm. right? You got a, a really strong fan base. Do you ever feel um left out in the music business at all yeah 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 i think it would be hard not to you know i'm a human being uh -huh. and like i'm confident in myself and and what i've done and will continue to do but um i think the people that appreciate me uh do so in a deep way and they really resonate with the music that I make. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to me uh, more than anything else. So that's why I've always appreciated you, man. 
because like I've always just felt like I belonged here and felt like you really do- dove into the music early and appreciate it. And it almost feels like when I come in here, it's kind of like irrelevant what is going on with me, like where I am in my ascension. Yeah. It's just like you're listening to music, like where am I in the artistic growth and like how am I doing as a mm-hmm. person? So, you know, but I feel like that type of uh, affection is rare in in our industry. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, man. Thanks, yeah. man. That, He's right. It is, though. It's rare. It but- is rare, and I think it's important, too. Thank you for sh- even sharing with us that you're going on vacation with your family because um, Kalani, earlier today when we were going out to get something from downstairs, he asked me, how do you balance? Mm. Like, how do you balance? And I think when you when you are with your family sometimes it, it'll it take your mind away from well how come this hasn't happened yet what about the accolades because to your point we are human and sometimes you don't do it for that but you would like to be mentioned you know mm-hmm. you would like to feel like somebody maybe on the outside saw what you did and, and mentioned it. it it's a it's a it's not a confirmation of your ability but it's a confirmation of like this is what I've, these are part of my dreams one day. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted, I, I wanted to be there. I wanted that shout out. I wanted that feeling. Um, and family and those vacation times, it balances those things out. And you get to go back and remind you of what's really important sometimes, yeah. you know, cause it's time with your grandmother. You don't, you don't have another 95 years. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? So enjoy that time. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, she may say something to you on this quiet time when you're away from all of the stuff and it's like, yo, mm. all right, I got it. And it, it changes your whole trajectory on this industry. So I'm glad you're doing that. Like, yeah. take time out for moments like that in the midst of all of this because you need it. These yeah. are the things that you'll remember. No, I appreciate that wisdom. It, that's why I'm trying to get the work-life balance on point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's really a challenge, especially like it me. Is. Like, you know, I manage myself. Like, I'm doing, you know, I'm completely independent. Obviously, I have some people that help me out, but it's like, my plate is, is full, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And I want to focus on the artistry even more than I'm focusing on it now. But one of the things I realized is, like, in our industry, there's not, like, a... Once you start to really see what's going on, it's, like, there's not, like, a ton of money to go around, yeah. like, relative to other industries. Mm-hmm. So what happens is you have, like, a lot of people that are underpaid, and the value that they're extracting is the credit mm-hmm. or what some might call the clout or what some might call the accolade or whatever. And that's why there's a lot of like weird temperamental <laughs> shit that goes on, I feel like, a lot of time because people hold on to that stuff because they're not extracting their true value yeah. out of the game. Uh-huh. And so, like, for me, I just try to remind myself it's like now that I see that too, because I am extracting a lot of value and, and making a nice living and doing my thing that, that I've earned. And so it's like, the accolade shit is really just a payoff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like buying you off mm-hmm. by giving you like this type of accolade in a, in certain ways that doesn't actually like feed your family or your soul really okay. at the end of the day. So I try to remind myself that um and and I try to remind myself that like how I do things is is more important than like like there's places that I want to get and where we're going, you know, like every yeah. time I come in here we've grown massively absolutely and i want to keep coming every year being like yo look where we at now you yeah. believe this shit yeah um you always but, have no nah, you always have you add to the story that's why i rock with you yeah because i yeah. see the growth but go ahead go ahead no, i appreciate it and and for me like there's still these places that i want to go but it's the most important thing is how i get there mm-hmm. yeah you know what i mean so that's yeah. what it, yeah that's that's that learning man round of applause it's the learning see this is the information that um she and I, a lot of times we have, but sometimes if I said that to you back in 2016, it ain't gonna land right. Yeah, you know, way, I'm just nah. trying to pay my rent. Yeah, like what is Sway talking I'm gonna be about? Like, Fuck out of here! Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> shut up, old man. You know, yeah. you know like you've been in it too long. You jaded. Oh, man. I'm an old man now, yo. I meet some of these kids. kids. They're like 18, 19, but they give me life because I run into them. And they remind me. So they're like they they don't know what they're talking about in the best way. Yeah. Like it's so refreshing mm-hmm. because they got this belief and like, and like I'm giving game and some of it is landing and some of it's not some of it. They're like, yeah, I hear what you're talking about, but like, I'm going to be different. Like I'm really the one. And I'm like, we all thought that like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but there's no getting around it. Like if you want to last in an industry in the game, whatever it is, 
you you got to do 10 years of of hard work yeah like even these people that blow up overnight like if they want to keep it they have to then do the 10 years of hard work Mm -hmm. otherwise it goes away so there's no getting around it so i talk to these kids and it's like i feel like the old man now but i feel like i fit better into that role to be honest yeah i've always felt kind of like an old soul you know yeah there's a lot lot of less press it's something it's you know how they say youth is wasted on the young or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of pressure when you're breaking in the game at that tender age of 17 and 18 that you don't really understand. Yeah. You haven't dealt with it. Now, you're, you're, you're a young man, but to them, what are you, in your 20s, right? I'm 30 now. 30, okay. All yeah. right, so you still a baby. Young yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> you ain't a baby, but you're definitely a young man. And so, uh, to me, I find that, Admirable. Give that man a round of applause that you're accepting your evolution, your yeah. maturity, yeah. and your growth in a natural way. And here's the thing. Now you pay yourself, right? For independent artists, we had Russell come up here and break down his, his formula. For you, everybody's formula a little differently. How do you get to the bag if you're an independent artist? How, how did it work out for you? For me, the irony is that like I stream a lot. On okay. Spotify, like if you look what I do now, and that's where some of the like the desire for accolade or for whatever comes from is like when you look at the numbers that I put up on the board relative to guys they say that are popping or whatever. Like on Spotify, like I'm right there with a lot of these guys, um, and it just happened through being consistent with music mm-hmm. um, and ha- making and really it was music first. Like I get, I get, I'm in this weird phase of like so many people have discovered me through songs and you remember when I first came in it was like it was always this like aesthetic hurdle to get over with yeah. me you know mm-hmm. it was like yo he yo, who's this okay he's nice but I don't know if I can see myself fucking with him like you know what I mean <laughs> and then like all I just wanted it to be about the music ironically I get tweets every day where people don't even know what I look like yet because they have my songs in their rotation because oh, it yeah. was served to them and like mm-hmm. I was just consistent and like they know these tunes. That's so crazy. That that that's fulfilling to me in the sense of like I have work to do to close that gap now, but it's fulfilling in the sense that like it's mu- it's music first. So it was the consistency really figuring out how to keep things affordable for myself. Okay. So I'm not in some big hole where I'm creating you know, content, which I hate that that word, but <laughs> like, yeah, but I'm creating content, creating videos and art and just being consistent and believing that like the music will do the work if yeah. it's good enough. Um, yeah, that's kind of been the that's how that That's how you've been making a living. Shows, you're doing a lot of shows. Shows I'm investing in, like okay. honestly, because you know I like to have the band or some type of live instrumentation. Okay. So like, I'm not even like, my, my income really comes from streaming and then obviously there's merch you know, we're getting the merch going even more. There's merch and there's other avenues, whatever. But a lot of it has just come from... That's what makes me a little different than some of, like, the super indie guys where it's kind of a unique come-up that's happening with me. And that's why I think a lot of people in the industry don't really understand it because it's, like, um, a lot of times the guys that have, like, the niche fan base or that are seen as underground or, like, more holistic or whatever it is, it's, like they'll do the direct to consumer stuff and blow it out the water and Uh whatever because the streams, whatever. But like I, I'm making a healthy living off of streaming. Good. That's good to hear. Did, did the song, um, the gang shit song that got you more exposure than I feel like any other song I've seen in your career. Right. Um, and it was politically driven and it was a really carefully crafted conceptual video that was amazing that went to it that sold these different perspectives but it was politically charged Mm -hmm. and that's how it was received Mm -hmm. i saw you with ari uh, melber i saw you on these different plat i think i might have called you and said hey i see you on this yeah 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 you know um how did that what what impact did that have on your career would you say as an artist doing that song (coughs) well that song put me on a lot of people's radar, but then they tried to use it to limit me. Exactly. They tried yeah. to like put me into a box, and then I had to like get out of that the political box. I never really had to get out of it, because if you were really paying attention to the music, there yeah. was always a bunch of music there that was good, and there, there were fans and stuff like that. But uh, Top Line, they tried to make it about like, uh, well, you know, you can't just do this, or it's like, it's just a political thing. And then also like, you know, people don't like it when you talk like, like when you when you bring the real like that Mm -hmm. you know in a way that is controversial and that actually is not like a layup like not saying the same five like 
liberal talking points that we all lay up and we're like, oh yeah, that's some woke shit. Like that song, there's a lot to digest. There's a lot you could disagree with. Yeah. You could feel weird about how I did it. And I invited those conversations, but people didn't want to really have those conversations. They just wanted to like kind of avoid them. A lot of people didn't see a lot of that stuff that went on with shit like that. The Ari thing was was obviously really dope. Like when I went on there, that ended up being the most viewed clip on the entire uh, MSNBC YouTube channel for mm-hmm. like the whole year. But again, it's weird, right? Because then it'd be like, yo, we got the most viewed clip on the MSNBC news channel for the whole year. But then we try to call other platforms and leverage it and other stuff. And it's like, so it takes someone like yourself. It mm-hmm. takes someone like Ari. Like it takes people that have platforms that like give a shit yeah. and are secure enough in their shit uh-huh. that they're not like, like, you know, answering to anybody that they feel weird about they're like nah this is what important this is what i do to really shed the light on that stuff and there's very few of those of those people it's one hand yeah <laughs> anyway, ari salute to ari too man he's such a hip-hop uh head you know yeah. like he he does the research he's been immersed in it and, seemed, and he cares so uh, I, I thought it was great that you matched up with him i'm gonna play a song called distance and tell me about that song man that's uh this producer uh, from Toronto that I linked up with King Chino and he just plays all the instruments live and that was just the shit when I heard it I was like this sounds like a Spike Lee soundtrack and I just was like this is a vibe like nighttime New York shit and you singing on it yeah yeah I'm singing a little bit on the hook maybe we'll come back and get Marlon Kraft to sing for us for the first time <laughs> this is Distance on Sway in the Morning Shade 4 or 5 <laughs> Distance this album is um Album man shows a lot of maturity with you know what it sounds like to me that you're really uh, not the security is in yourself. Mm. So when I listen to songs like um, Ups and Downs, that's one of Kalani's favorite songs, right? You like Ups? What do you like about Ups and Downs? The whole vibe that you bring, like bring us through like a journey on the song kind of thing. Like that's a vibe. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Well, yeah, and and um, what else? Marathon. Kalani like Basmati too. Mm. And he and he eats two day old Basmati rice. So Y'all maybe that's way. Y'all love rice way. Y'all love Are you gonna do me like that? <laughs> Did you just eat some old rice? What was it? Yeah. I ate some old jollof rice. Oh, okay. That's not Basmati. <laughs> All right. When you make music, damn. What what is it for now? Is it is it to appeal or is it is it for yourself? Is it what what, what motivates you to make music at this point? It's definitely for myself. I have this like insatiable hunger to just create more music. Someone asked me at this this event I was doing. They were like, they were like, "What keeps you going when you, when you like, how do you keep writing music?" And it's like I'm a very like heady and analytical dude, um, and rational and whatever. But like my need to make music is like the closest thing I have to like a. To like a spirituality for a long time mm-hmm. like because it's just something that i can't i can't really explain you know what i mean like i just i have to do it it's just my it's my voice you know and um and, and then there's like you know i gotta keep paying the bills i have goals for myself mm-hmm. and my family i i like to speak to the people that i speak to because people the music does something for them and they tell tell me that and that makes me want to make more music for them but at the end of the day like I think it's got to be about an artist's personal journey because otherwise it could really get get tricky, you know, trying to please people. Marlon Craft is here. You said you're very over-analytical and cerebral. <clears throat> I'm going to throw something out of the blue at you just to get your feedback on this. A um, lot of conversation about, you know, UFOs and aliens and aircraft of what, Heather? Oh, <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. I, I ain't saying nothing. Go ahead. I was wondering if he saw that, Marlon. <laughs> I saw that, but you know what's so funny? Like, what I don't. Thoughts on it? I don't like care. <laughs> Thank you, Marlon. <laughs> you trying to say that's so nice? So yeah. nice. Yeah, I don't give a shit. But I don't. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't tap in. Like, here's the thing. Like, in, we're in such a bad place with information and the distribution of information that, like, if I'm gonna try to go learn about a thing, I know that I have to like take time to actually invest to go dive into that. So when I see shit peripherally. Like, I'm just kind of like, I don't have the space for this, like, mentally, emotionally. Like, I don't have the time until I really... So I'm just kind of like, unless it's something that's like, you know, 
I don't I don't know. I don't um I don't know. And yeah. it's also then it's also like, man, you know, I don't know. I, it's to cover up for something else. I don't I don't I don't think that's I just think it's like I think people it's funny people think like oh we need to cover up whatever it's like cover up what like all we do is go home and watch fucking Netflix like we're covered up like <laughs> motherfuckers is not paying attention like you know what I'm saying like you know what I'm saying like we're plenty distracted like you know what I'm saying like that's the irony it's like yo they doing this to try to do this and it's like yo You've been on your phone all day just scrolling down an app of nothingness. Like, they won that battle already. Like, you know, myself included. You know what I'm saying? Myself included. So it's like, I don't know. I, I, I just don't. I'm really like, I'd be busy nowadays, bro. I don't, I'm don't. i just like trying to not divert my energy too much. To I'm never going to ask that question again. <laughs> no, all right. Thank was- God. <laughs> but can I ask, Period. Can I ask, though, because you, you brought up about the way information is, you know, consumed and, and digested and everything today, but that also sort of applies to you in your position as an artist because people are going to be like, yo, I heard Marlon Craft said this or he posted this, and then you have to come back and be like, guys, this is false. I didn't do that. So do you ever think about, like, how you conduct yourself online with regards to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um it's funny because I was having this conversation with my friend Evie, Evie Ani. Do you know her? Mm-hmm. She's a dope journalist. We did like an interview and we were oh, backstage. Yeah, I definitely know her. I know who she is. Yeah, yeah. she's amazing. Yeah. She's great. And we were talking about, and I was saying how like we're in this era where like everyone has a microphone in front of their face, and it's like you just like it's all these podcasts and it's all these clips online every day, and it's like there's no barrier to entry, and. So I'm people tell me all the time, like, do more stuff, like speak more, do more interviews, like do it. And I'm just like, I don't want to just be another person talking about shit that I half know about. Like, but she was saying this is a problem she's facing with a lot of people right now is that right now in the in the current climate, the people that have things to say don't want to talk. Because yeah. it's so watered down and the perception, it's just like they don't want to add to the mix. Mm-hmm. And then the irony is that we need those voices more than ever to dilute the bullshit so like i'm trying to be thoughtful i guess as we move forward now about adding a little bit more of my voice into the mix of who i am but i also think that we've got kind of diminished the artist role in society it's like yo i make it the art fam yeah like you <laughs> you you do, you guys like what i think and feel is in there yeah like i'm not reading every day like i'm not uh, following the news every single day. I'm not like accountable to that. And when we ask our artists to be accountable to that, it usually goes well sometimes for like six months, maybe a year. And then they say some wild shit. Yeah. And then you remember they're just a regular guy mm-hmm. that spends most of their time in a studio and probably got a bunch of money and is actually kind of disconnected from everything that's going on with real people. So like, you know, I, I've accepted, I think I felt a lot of responsibility when I first came into the game to speak to thir- certain things, and I think I've done that, and I think I'll continue to do that naturally, but I also think that, like, my agenda, I've, I'm comfortable now in my role as an artist in society. Like, mm-hmm. that is what I contribute, and, like, when I speak and don't speak, it needs to be intentional. I'm, I'm glad he thought that. He thought about this. This is something that he gave some real thought to. I appreciate that, Marlon Craft. Basically, I ain't gonna talk about shit I don't know about Sway. Don't ask me about UFOs. I, I feel like I feel like I feel like Sway said something about this on another segment. I did. And Every now, day. And now I'm making I'm like I'm like and accidentally I'm the only one that keeps telling you. him to shut up. No, you with me. Finally, <laughs> all right, all right, I got a backup. Like shut the hell up with all of that. Go visit the caves by yourself. I'm just saying they found, you know, an area in the Grand Canyon that's super blocked off now, it's restricted. I'm I'm not saying they didn't. By the way, too. Marlon, don't go down it. Just okay. God, even yeah. that, that, that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, Marlon, just baby you. Like, yeah, right. it, Marlon, let it go. I'm using my, cares. I'm using my relationship with you. I'm weaponizing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Feeling all guilty. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, no, I'm ass. fucking with you, man. I think yeah. all that stuff is just a distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. to be honest. No, with I hear you. you. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, it's all a distraction. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, man, can 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 you sing something? Oh, what was that noise right there? I could rap something. You could rap something? Yeah, I could rap something. I don't know if we're in studio singers yet. You know what time of the day it is, Heather B. Of course I do. Okay, now Marlon Craft, you are a family. Yes, sir. And because of that, I'm gonna take full advantage of our relationship. 
Yes, sir. I'm going to ask you to do something as family often does that you're going to feel obligated to do and you won't say no to. Uh huh. Because not too many MCs can actually enter this realm. Mm. I don't ask many people to do this. In fact, I very seldom ask any to do this one. It's been a long time since I've been asking people, but DB wanted to bring it back. Kalani wanted to bring it back. The people wanted to bring it back. They wanted the five fingers to come back. Woo! So Marlon Kraft, welcome with that to shit. the five fingers challenge on Sway in the Morning. Let's go! I'm with that shit. Let's do it. A brave soul has entered the arena, seeking to test their lyrical ability. <laughs> Five beats will be chosen at random. No requests. I was so Welcome nervous the first time we did this. To the Sway in the Morning <laughs> Five Finger Freestyle Challenge. <laughs> On Shake 45. Welcome to the Valley of the Hyenas! Huh. Huh. Marlon Kraft is oh, back. this is a great beat. You go get crazy yeah, with this look. one, Marlon. Hey. I'm a New York giant word to Willie Mays. A lot of bars, but what you really say, why they don't hit replay, all that prove yourself, shit don't get you paid, spit the shit they feel from the class to the cell, cause them past could have been the same, Nipsey could have been Bill Gates if the script was changed, or I could have been out on them streets bringing pain, or with a fucking cup in my hand, cause I be watching them mans live outside wondering if me and their mental shit the same. But who am I to preach? I'm blowing past cats who tried to reach. I'm from the era when AI was the answer. Now they think AI is the answer. Shit, but you can't copy a soul. Go ahead, copy a stanza. I don't rock with the banter. I ain't cocky, I'm stand up. You ain't never felt that. Ain't knocking your mans, but his eyes got him some plans that's gonna end up with you jammed up. I retire Dame before they turn me into Westbrook. Want love at my worst, cause they don't know what my best took. Y'all only respect the game when the refs look. I play the same in the rucker and in the finals. All these wax getting paid. Y'all must be into the vinyl. Feel like Vito if he could have seen what happened to Michael. Yeah. Look. This a wisdom I can't make you hear. A fly can't buy you in the rap game where everybody says they was a hitter. You wasn't in the field. You was a designated hitter. They judge off thumbnails. Check the resume. Get bitter. When they see the score and realize I'm Hans Zimmer. I let them argue who white noise is different. Out here doing the white boy Olympics. I'm good on that <laughs> shit. The bar low and the bar's low. When the lights come, we'll look up like where the stars go. Yo, I'm out of dudes weight class with the shit. I stay laughing and shit. I ain't better than no one as a man. But hey, rapping and shit, they ain't lasting for shit. Eight years in, in that time, I done broken the mold. Told a lot of objective truths. They'd object to who told them, and I get it. But my spot is earned, my stock deserved. A lot's been given to dudes who did a lot, let's earn it. So pardon me, I'm taking my respect. Old fashioned or it's wire, or we taking it by check. Dude's integrity, Fugazi to your honor, I object. Try and be less of me for them is all that I regret. Shit, might catch me deep in meditation in the grass by the river, try and beat my hesitation. Or on top of beat, critiquing my presentation. Exemplifying greatness, try and lead a generation. No surrender defeat or resignation in my solar estimation elite or by design two feet all in my grind It seem how they define these days is unaligned with the standards I subscribe to while y'all was jotting captions I was plotting actions to be Michael or the mic while looking more Johnny Paxson They ain't really that it's more about who's in fashion. They ain't really that it's more about who that faction Yeah me, I cashed in the passion and left the casino Sometimes you can tell more by a person's silence All that which he know That's why I never trip when they leave me off the list They looked at me and seen a lot of risk Who won't jump out the window for this? I never really had a cosign of OG I did it all dolly Undercover till I found my Jolie Word Smith found a missus So I've been counting paper, not counting bitches but I do it for the art though, and to watch the heart grow. All they want is bread, and that's malnutritious. Yeah. <laughs> Super califragilistic ass rappers, bunch of words, and none of them realistic ass rappers. Made you stars, but you common big dip ass rappers. The culture's sick, and you the symptom ass rappers. Sheesh. Me, I'm making no apologies. I call it how I see it. They Tim Donaghy. All heart, my bio is biology. Secret to eating good, bitch. I cook constantly. Dudes beefing over who got the sauce, man. I don't speak Balinese. It's all nonsense. I'm more concerned with Thibodeau coaching offense or why it seemed like stupidity equals content. I'm on 10 like I'm gone, Clyde Frazier. Part my abrasion. A pump fake could get you in the lane, but you still gotta finish, gotta lay them. They ain't ready to hit the pavement. I'm saying, like. Sway. Marlon Crab, come on, baby! Come on, baby!
That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Craft. The bars have officially reached elite level. Turn my mic up. But I'm not hearing myself the, the way I want to hear me. The bar's low. The, the bar. What, what do you say? The bar low and the bars the low. The bars, you <laughs> symptom ass rappers. The game is sick, you symptom ass rappers. Oh my God. <laughs> Talking to you, that was a five fingers of just a five fingers challenge. Those bars were exceptional. I feel good. I was in a different mood this morning. Oh, I love that. Shit, I feel good. I go out in the world now. Like Hip hop is alive. Yo, you're, 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 you're so dope. Um, I appreciate you, Marlon Kraft. Thank you, man. I was oh, looking no, forward thank to you, the, man. You know, I couldn't make it the other day. You know, I was like, please, hopefully you'll come back Monday. Yes. Um, what did you bring? You brought some gifts? Yeah, yeah you yeah. got mine. Slide yeah, it back yeah. over. Okay. okay. I got, I got some notes, <laughs> I'm trying to go Damn, for the Devin. swipe. Oakland, five finger discount. You saw that? I got some for y'all too, man. Okay, wow, that's for a good sure. look. Yeah, yeah. There you go, DB. Give me one too. For sure. That's, that's... These are hot in the streets, man. Okay, Come on. Kalani these are the, like. I'm going to need my sign, please. I got y'all, man. Okay, and then and Torch, you want one too, right, Torch? I got Torch. Hold on. Is Torch there? Torch Torch Where's Torch right here? at? Is Torch here? Yeah. Oh, okay, there he goes. Torch. <laughs> Is Torch here? What? <laughs> <laughs> Marlon, how can people reach you, brother? Man, listen. MarlonCraft.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram, MarlonCraft. Spotify, MarlonCraft. Everything, MarlonCraft. Tap in with the new project. It's a lot of new stuff coming after this as well. We're just gonna keep it pushing. I'm in Europe in September and October. Damn. Congratulations! Get tickets. Thank you. Yeah, okay. it's gonna be it's gonna be my first full Europe tour. September and October. I'm happy for you, man. Okay. Yeah, end of September. So we doing it. About to go out there and Have buy fun. tickets to the show, y'all. I'm trying not trying to lose a bunch of money. <laughs> Come on, baby. No, it's gonna be know, good. Man. It's gonna be, it'll be, nah, all it's gonna right. be great. It's gonna be great. I'm, Have I'm excited. Fun. Yeah, yeah. The show is when again? Um. The the Europe show is September twenty fourth to October fourth. I'm okay. out there, man. I'm out okay. there in Europe. Yep. All right. I got the, the new album too. Yep. Home court home court advantage volume two, man. It's out right now. Everywhere you can stream this it. This is dope. Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's the mixtape, man. This is mixtape craft right here. This is me on my rapping shit. Obviously, it's some singing in there. We getting more musical, but this is this is my rapping shit and. Yeah, yeah, man. Always seeing. Get the girls. Get the money. Marlon Craft <laughs> for the money. Y'all can follow him on social at Marlon Craft.